Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I say that I'm very pleased we've had this excellent debate this afternoon. An important debate on the 50th anniversary of a continuous at sea deterrent. And my apologies to members of the House if I don't mention every single member who's made a contribution. But it's very important for us to recognise where we are to begin with. Uh, the continuous uh, at sea deterrent is provided at the moment by four Vanguard class submarines and they're carrying the Trident missile system. In July 2016, this House voted to maintain the UK's nuclear deterrent beyond the early 2030s, and the Dreadnought class submarines will replace the Vanguard submarines. The first of a new class will enter service in the early 2030s. Now, one of the strong features of this debate has been the fact that uh, many members, indeed most members, have paid genuine tribute to the uh, women and men and families who support our uh, at-sea deterrent. And I think it's important that this House places on record that we are truly grateful for their ongoing commitment. I think in particular of, of the contributions of a member from North Durham, Seven Oaks, Rayleigh and Wickford, and also the contribution from the member for Ludlow. And I have to say that uh, his done report, his done review, is truly excellent. I absolutely agree with him, and I hope the, member, the, the government takes his ideas forward. But could I say also in this context, the contribution from the Labour member for Gedling has been important, because not only did he rightly place an emphasis on playing tribute to our servicemen and women, he also made the point that all of us collectively who believe in the concept of deterrence need to make the case to the people of this country. He also made the point that it's very important that we stress that none of us want to keep nuclear weapons. We're not in favour of nuclear weapons. What we want to see is a peaceful world and we want to see an impetus given to the process of multilateralism. I'll give away my point. Can he tell the House then why it is that not a single Labour Member of Parliament has spoken out against nuclear weapons in the debate this afternoon? Because I take it as a granted we are all against nuclear weapons. None of us want to see nuclear weapons being used. The most effective way to preserve peace, however, is through the, the concept of de deterrence. Let me make the point. I, I, I want to make the point. I will give way to her. Thanks, my honourable friend, for giving way. Yeah. The alternate position being the SNP is a position which wants to, the UK to give up nuclear weapons, but quite happy to uh, be secure under an umbrella of, of the Euro European NATO umbrella. He makes a very important point, and uh, I will come on to the SNP's interesting position in, in a moment. But could I say that the case for the nuclear deterrence of this country is overwhelming? It has been put forward with some eloquence and determination by the members for Berwick upon Tweed, uh, by Barrow and Furness, and others. But I have to say that the, the case has been particularly well put by the chair of the Defence Select Committee, the member for New Forest East. And I'd like to quote from an article, in fact, the honourable member, right honourable member wrote back in 2006. And then he said, and I quote, the purpose of a British nuclear deterrent remains what it was, has always been, to minimise the prospect of the United Kingdom being attacked by mass destruction weapons. It is not a panacea and is not designed to forestall every type of threat. Nevertheless, the threat which it is designed to counter is so overwhelming that no other form of military capability could manage to avert it. Now, I think that was true when he wrote it. It's certainly the case today. And in that context, could I also refer to the fact that this is a debate which has gone on for a number of generations. It is not a new debate about deterrence. And in that context, I'd like to refer to the fact that my predecessor was a man by the name of Morgan Jones. He was the first conscientious objector to be elected to Parliament. He represented Caffili, and uh, I've produce a book and it's coming out and will be available in all good bookshops in three weeks' time. <laughs> but in the early 1930s, Morgan Jones 
a strong pacifist in the First World War throughout the 1920s, came to the conclusion, reluctantly, that it is necessary to defend freedom and protect democracy by Britain rearming and being prepared to stand up against the evil of fascism. That's an important lesson which we should not forget today. Some people would argue that the world has changed over the last few years. The polarisation which we saw between East and West, between the free world and the so-called communist world, is no longer marring the globe. We've also seen the emergence of non-state players, Al-Qaeda and ISIL. But let's be clear that the world has has changed, yes, but the threats of non-state players are still with us. But what we have seen recently is the development of an old style, new style of nationalism, particularly with regard to China and with regard to Russia. And I do pay tribute to the way the member for Beijing has highlighted these facts very, very clearly. We see China be, becoming increasingly assertive in the South China Sea, the East Sea, as the Vietnamese refer to it. We've also seen Russia being increasingly assertive, and I have to say duplicitous as well, with regards to Ukraine, Estonia, and many other places as well. But I have to say, although the, the case for modern deterrence is overwhelming, one of the interesting points of this debate is the position which has been articulated by the Scottish National Party. If anybody wants to have a cake and eat it, it is them. We've heard from the members of the SNP from Argyll and Butte and from Glasgow South, but they want noth- nothing to do with. They want Britain to abandon its nuclear deterrence, but they themselves, as a member for North Durham has said, nevertheless want to continue to be a part of NATO, which of course is a nuclear alliance. So, yes, please, yes, I'm delighted to. Because whilst his position is that the workers of the world should ignite... The position, of the, Scottish, the position of the Scottish Labour Party is the same as the position of the Scottish National Party. Yeah. So can you explain why they're wrong and he's right? Yeah. Well, I have no doubts whatsoever, but this is not a, a devolved matter that I'm aware. The policy which counts is a policy of the British Labour Party. And I would just like to quote the manifesto on, on which all Labour members were elected, said very clearly in 2017, Labour supports the renewal of a Trident nuclear deterrent. As a nuclear armed power, our country has a responsibility to fulfil our obligations under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Yes, so we want to see multilateral disarmament. Yes, we want to encourage that process. We want to encourage that process, but also we have firm square in supporting Britain, Britain's nuclear deterrent. Oh, I'm very, very generous. I'll give way to that. I am grateful to the Honourable Gentleman. I just want to, I just want to clarify uh, his position from what he said to my last intervention. Is it the case, therefore, as far as Scottish Labour's policy is concerned, is that it doesn't matter because Westminster Labour's policy is for Trident renewal. I'm simply pointing out to what should be blindingly obvious, that the decisions on these matters are made here. Of course, we all want different points of view being expressed. We value points of view in all parts of the United Kingdom. But the decisions on Britain's nuclear deterrent are made in this House. It's also very, very interesting that uh, when we heard contributions earlier from the SNP, they were quite uh, blasé in saying that, yes, we don't want uh, the nuclear deterrent. We're quite prepared to see it uh, shipped out of a uh, fast lane. But what are they going to put in its place? Very, very reluctant to say that. Very, very reluctant to give any indication. Well, no, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, they talk... Hang on a second. Wait a minute. They talk very blandly about having a Scottish Navy, but how much is that going to cost? What frigates are they going to buy? We'd like to know. Go on, now's your opportunity. Tell us. Well, let me make one thing perfectly clear. And he should remember this as the party that did put up a poster boy, I don't see him in his place, for the Better Together campaign, is that when we make promises in shipbuilding, unlike him or the law opposite him, they won't be broken. Yeah. 
Well, that's a cardinal example of the SNP being unwilling or unable to answer a straightforward question. All talk, no action, full of hot air. That's why the SNP are getting nowhere fast in Scotland. But could I say this? There is one question I want to ask of the, the government before I sit down, and that is the, with regard to the, the cost of the, the Dreadnought programme. We heard earlier from the Secretary of State that it is to cost uh, £31 billion, and a contingency is built in. But not so long ago, we had the report from the National uh, Audit Authority, which uh, pointed out that this was an extremely expensive programme, which it is, and of course it is inevitably putting a huge strain on the MOD's overall equipment plan. We know that the MOD budget is facing enormous difficulties, so I'm asking the Minister in his response if he could make any comment about the, the cost of this and precisely how any future escalation of costs will be built in. But I ask him also to return to this question which has been often put and often discussed, and that is whether or not of this whole programme should be outside of the MOD's budget. It has been suggested that the Treasury are very reluctant, and we know relations between the MOD and the, the Treasury are, are not too good and haven't been too good for, for some time. But does he think that this is such a, an important programme, such an important amount of expenditure, that a strong case needs to be made now to ensure that it's taken out of the MOD's budget and considered quite separately? That is a question for him to address. But could I say, Madam, Mr Speaker, in conclusion, that I think this has been a, a good debate this afternoon. We have all paid genuine tribute to the men and women who have kept us safe in this country. But, Mr Speaker, we live in a world which has changed profoundly since the decision of Clem Attlee and his government to give the UK an independent nuclear deterrent. But deterrence is still vitally important and the best way to maintain deterrence and therefore maintain peace is through our continuous at sea deterrent. Thank you. Minister Stuart Andrew to reply to the debate. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. We've certainly had a very useful um, and important.